you want to do. I bet you can't walk a mile in these and four so You know the difference from a baller and a scrub, nigga. And if you tell a no, then you would go. Me in life, you need a bag. And I don't want you around me if you ain't getting cash. I'm focused on the future, I ain't running. Take all your problems, make them his. What's good? Tell me what you need to feel free. Tell me what you see. Before we get this thing started, give us your name and your profession. Yeah, yeah, Cabana Cardi, yeah. Hip hop, R&B, artist, singer, songwriter, whatever you want to call it, we here. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, give us a, the backstory behind your artist name. Backstory behind my artist name, uh, Cabana basically comes from, you know, uh, it was a period of time I was going to a studio called Studio Compound, you know, right around in the Park Heights area. Mm -hmm. Get a little crazy around there. But it was <laughs> like my little, you know, peace of mind in the madness, you feel me? So it was like my little vacation spot where I could just be free, you know what I'm saying, get my thoughts out. It was like my little cabana for real. Got you, got you. So that's where cabana came from and the Cartier just came from, you know, Cartier shades. Got you, got you. You wear a lot of Cartier shades? Yeah. Okay, okay. Not as much as I used to, but you know, I like them every once in a while. I still okay. put them on. Cool, cool, cool. Give us like the background, like where did music start for you? Music for me started in fifth grade, my first heartbreak. So it was this girl, Broke my heart. Let me tell you about it real quick. I'm gonna make it short. So it's like around the first time you kind of realize, like, damn, I got feelings. I, I like this girl. Like, what's going on? Fifth grade. So I didn't really know what to say to her because it's my first time. So I'm like, you know what? I went home. I wrote her a love letter. Blah, blah blah. Basically, like, yo, will you be my girlfriend? And just all this other shit. So yeah, I bought her a love letter and I I took a um a bracelet, taped it to this piece of paper, folded it up, mm. put it on her lock in the beginning of the day. So all day I got anxiety, like, yo, is she gonna see this? Like, what's she gonna say? What is she gonna like me? So yeah. Lunchtime, all the kids go to their lockers, then we go to the cafeteria. I'm like, she ain't say nothing. I'm like, eh, maybe she ain't see it, or maybe, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So yeah, after lunch, I mean at the end of the day, I forgot about it. I'm like, uh. So at the end of the day, I went to Heaven Elementary. Shout out to Heaven Elementary. So, <laughs> all the kids are in the locker. All the kids are in the hallway at their lockers. So I'm just getting my stuff on my locker. I feel a tap on my shoulder. It's her. Her name is Asha. You feel me? Okay. She's like, did you write this? <laughs> all the kids is looking. And I'm just looking up at her like, yeah. Right? She's holding a note like this. And she just rips the note up. Throws it in the air, the papers uh -huh. just fall in slow motion. Asha. At least that's how I remember it. You feel me? I should. Come All on. the kids in the hallways laughing. Ah, uh, you feel me? Heart was broken. When I say that was the longest bus ride home ever, you feel me? Mm. And I was going through some stuff at home too. We say that for another time, so I ain't really had nobody to talk to. Gotcha, you know what gotcha, I'm saying? Okay. So there's so, an add on top of it. Yeah, it just, on, it just was bad. I got home, they was talking about it in the house. It was just bad. Uh -uh. So I ain't had nobody to talk to, and the only way I knew how to express myself was to write, because I always was good at English. So as I was writing, blah, 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 yo, I wrote like two pages. The last two lines of what I wrote wrong, and I read it back. I was like, damn, let me try to do this for real. You know what I mean? So that's kind of how I started rhyming with the poetry. And then YouTube came out and they had instrumentals. Mm. When I had only the beat, that's when it really went up. <laughs> you feel me? Okay. But yeah, shout out to Asha, man. Okay, Asha. All right, Asha might. Asha. Okay, she might Asha. be a come up. All right, cool, yeah. cool, cool. Um, so listening to your music, I know you definitely describe like the hard times. If somebody's living here in Baltimore and they live in like, I would say an urban area. They will understand your music. They will nah, get the sure. hard times. Definitely. But you also cater to the love side. Yeah. And I think you do very well catering to the love side as far as like in a male's perspective. Because you, cause you can get, you, I think you do great with giving both sides of love. Like mm -hmm. you give the hurt side of love. You also give that, that joyous side of love. Because nah, there sure. is like a good side of love. Yeah. Um, what besides Asha? What we'll put you in that that frame to be like, yo, I can do both. Like, I can do like tell my story, whether it's a struggle or not, but also like tap into that love side. What we'll put you in that mindset of doing both? I mean, you know, that wasn't always cool. It was either you was R and B or you just was straight hardcore street rapper. Mm -hmm. But then a guy, I don't know if you know him, his name Drake. He came out, right? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and Drake mm -hmm. was doing both, and I listened to him, and this was the first time I would I actually heard a man be vulnerable. And I seen the reaction he was getting. So I'm like, yo, maybe it's okay to express myself in these type of ways I be feeling mm -hmm. without looking soft or anything. 
So it was really Drake that kind of inspired me, but I've always been a real vulnerable person, um, true to myself because I know who I am. So once he showed me that it was okay, then that's when it just developed and built from there. You mm -hmm. feel me? Okay. So what was the follow-up song after Asha? Like Asha? It's a blur. <laughs> oh, I tell you. Wait, that was fifth grade. So I had my whole middle school time. I was trying to rap like Jada Kiss or like okay. anybody up north. <laughs> like I was trying in the battle rap and shit like that. But a song that really shaped me, I did um I did um Drake's Marvel Room. I did a okay. remix. That was my first time ever using auto tune. So I was like, also had me thinking, yo, I sound good, I can sing. You feel me? So that kind of introduced me to the singing aspect of things. So auto-tune, I ain't gonna lie, auto-tune really kind of taught me how to sing a little bit. Gotcha, or, okay. Or not even sing, because I don't consider myself a singer. But, but like, I but guess find a pitch. be able to understand melody, gotcha, gotcha, you know? Gotcha. So yeah. Okay. Um, are you still independent? Yeah, I'm independent okay. at, this, at this current time. What, like... What hardships or what, I guess, seeing like the vision drove you to be independent? Because I feel like a lot of people try to go search out, like, I gotta find a label, I gotta find somebody that's gonna really gonna put me on. But like, independent is like, it's a grind, it's really a grind. But I feel like once you do it right, like, you, you make it to your success, like, as an artist, and you don't really consider like, Oh, what mainstream is type mm -hmm. thing, but you make it to where you feel like, yo, this, I got it. Like I'm in a bag right here. So what, what really gave you that 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 push to like do um, independent instead of mainstream type thing? Mainstream, I feel like when you're a kid or when you're new to the game, you coming in, you think, yo, I need to get signed, I need to get signed to the label, because I used to feel the same way, but I was misguided mm -hmm. with information. You get what I'm saying, like. I think artists really feel like, yo, once I get this deal, I'm going to just sit back and everything is going to be sweet. No, when you sign your deal, you got to work harder than you worked before. So when it came to the independent grind for me, yo, I knew for a fact, like I had to build my own self up, mm -hmm. figure out the systems, figure out the algorithm, see how things move, what shakes, what doesn't work, what platforms are going to give me the results that I need. Because once the label comes and you sign a deal with the label, mm -hmm. you still got to put work in. Life just doesn't go like this. You yeah, gotta work yeah, yeah. 10 times harder. So with me knowing like, eventually at some point I do want to sign to a label, let me go ahead and develop my own system, my own blueprint. So when I come to the label, I can say, yo, I got people in this department working for me on the marketing side, the branding side, the Instagram, I mean, a mm -hmm, social media mm -hmm. campaign side. So when you give me that budget, I already know how to split my bread. Gotcha. So yo, stay ahead of the game, bro. Stay ahead of the game and have your shit together. Cause it's just an investment. Mm -hmm. Just an investment. It definitely is. Definitely and negotiate is. your percentages, negotiate your terms and conditions, what you want out of the deal. Don't just sign anything just because. And if you do, have a plan. Gotcha. It's not about how you start, it's how you finish. Mm -hmm. Yes, is. sir. Yes, sir. So, all right. So, say if you were to be done with music, right? Like, as you, as a performing artist, what would you like? Market yourself. Would you apply for the A &R position? Would you apply for like the head of a label? Like, what position would you apply for if you're going to a label? If I wasn't trying to be an artist anymore. Yeah, if you was trying to be an artist anymore, but you you about to um, yo, I'm about to give myself to these labels. I'm about to get into a good position. What mm. position would you apply for? Maybe like an A &R position. Okay. Maybe like an A &R position, writer position. I would be like a mix of all of those things. Something where I can stay out the way. I don't got to worry about being a flyer or having this or that. You ain't mm -hmm. got to see me all the time. I can still write. When you put that shit out, I get my percentages. You go perform. I get my mechanical royalties. You get that placement I eat, and I'm just chilling in the crib eating pasta and lobster. You feel okay, me? Spending time with my family. Okay. But I do love the creative process. Mm -hmm. For a long time, I hated the performing aspect because I used to be so scared, bro. Like, when I say I was scared, petrified. I love it now. I love it now. But yeah, I would probably just chill, bro. Get my money quietly. What you think made you scared of that process, though? Because it's like, because nobody, all right, so if nobody never seen you, you know, you definitely want to go and give them, like, your all so they can know, like, who you are as an artist. Like, they can come to, like, intimate events to know you as a person. But, like, I'm performing, just going to give them, like, that, that thing to know that I am an artist. So what made you, like, nervous about that? So it kind of goes back to, and it's, it's really crazy. Um, the older I get, the more I realize how your childhood kind of shapes the way you are in reality, like to the public and stuff like that. Gotcha. So remember after the heartbreak shit mm -hmm. like that, 
Um, I told you I was really going through some stuff at home. You know what I'm saying? And I was a little bit insecure with who I was because I didn't know because it was like people made me feel like I wasn't who I was who I was. Mm -hmm. When gotcha. I when I feel like I knew who I was destined to be. Yeah. But when you were a kid, but nobody really ensured that for you. They could, that's gotcha. what I'm saying. They could manipulate your mind. So it took me a minute. That kind of stuck with me for a minute. So when I say I was scared, bro, I had anxiety just wondering what people would 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 think. Mm -hmm. And then gotcha. I was like bow-legged, pigeon-toe. I'm like, what if I go up the steps to the stage and I just fall off and, like, people laugh at me? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I get you. I get you. And I wasn't that confident with my voice. So it's really a full-circle moment. The person I am today, yo, I really had to grow into this person. And that's what that's why I love me so much because I was dead, like, <laughs> through the whole struggle type, you know what I'm saying, the whole process. Okay. So that's, to answer your question, that's what kind of made me um, insecure at that time. Gotcha. So what advice would you give to an artist who is like doing independent? Like, I'm not about to go look for a label because I know that could be a thing, but I want to do this thing independent. What advice would you give to them? The advice I would say to the independent artist right now, get on your hustle, bro. Learn how to sell in products. Come up with your own product because if you're independent and you're trying to get to a label, nobody, I mean, people still just get signed off pure talent nowadays, but at the end of the day, you gotta come with your with your with your with your with your numbers. Mm -hmm. Yo, I did this on my own. I got these hats. I got these shirts. Villains need love too. Beanies, hoodies, all that's on my site at villainspov.com. You feel me? But you want to be able to bring them numbers. Like, yo, I sold X amount of hats in a span of three months mm -hmm. off yeah. of my own budget. The metrics. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Yeah. So cool. Give me fifty thousand, and that's gonna double because I'm already on the path to sell this for these next three months. Mm -hmm. So let's double the the product. So yeah. Get your hustle up. Stay committed to your craft. Don't be lazy when it comes to writing them songs. Really take that time out. You know what I'm saying? And just keep doing your thing, bro. Stay solid. You're going to get there. So I got one question. Yeah. What is it with you and I would say the, the cars? Because I, I, I went through your discography. Yo, it's so funny you just said that because we had a and whole like, debate in the group chat. They, your they gonna your kill covers? They're going to kill me when they see this. But you, but you, but you, yeah. you want to know one thing? The covers is like, I don't know, right? So if, if somebody, I guess if somebody was to look at your like discography, mm -hmm. it's like a timeline of a heartbreak, which I don't want to say it yeah. was a thing, but like the timeline of a heartbreak and getting over it, like that's what it depicts, right? So the first one I'm looking at is like, um, you got your hand, your head in your hand. I feel like this is 21, 20. Oh, unicorn water. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So the, yeah. the head in the hand, and but it progresses. It's like, it's like a, we in a car, like we out in the city, we in a car, we counting the money. And then your most recent one, mm. if it doesn't need love too, I we in a even, car as well. I didn't even peep that. That's crazy. So it's, I want to say it's a, a, a progress through like, I don't want to say heartbreak. Let's say like a progress through like, um, life change, pretty much. Because heartbreak can be in life change, but it's like, I guess if you look at it as an artist, like, you, like, progressing through, like, your emotions. Yeah, that's artist. crazy. Yeah. Like, when you start as an artist, the shit is hard. It's stupid. It's hard as fuck. So, like, you got oh, yeah. that, that, that head Very in the hard. hand type thing. But once you get to the money, you might have a heartbreak and a miss. But once you get to the money, you do all these things, then you get to where you're at right now, which is the cover for um, Villas Need Love 2. And yeah. it's like, you really, I feel like in that cover, you're really just looking at like, who really fuck with me for me? I know I might want a person by my side, but I also want like this, lo this love to know that people genuinely fuck with me for my craft. So yeah. what's up with you with, with the covers, with the cars yeah. and the covers? What's, 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 what's the, I guess, what's the, what's the marketing behind that? Yo, it's so crazy that you said that. You said, what's the marketing behind it? Now you got my brain going so loud. <laughs> After this, I'm back in the lab. We coming up with the whole marketing fit. But nah, I don't know, bro. Like, I don't know. If you're an artist, if you're a real artist, like, you already know. After you leave the studio and you make that song that you just made, it's all about if that shit gonna hit in the car or not. You feel me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you feel oh me? Oh my God, yes, yes, yes. Yo, yes, that yes. might be it. That might be it. Okay. So, I'm gonna take it for that. Yes. Because yeah. the acoustic in, acoustics in a car is... It's so much different. I feel like I be trying to find it in, in the, the headphones. Wild. You you gotta see but if like yeah. yo if if it hit in the car, you got one. If you, you can ride out to it, no matter what, what genre saying. is, if you can ride out to it, then yeah. it means it's a motherfucking hit. Okay. That's a fact. All right, but what, I might gotta make that my thing now. The car thing's for real, for real. You might. Yeah. You might. What song yeah. or album or 
even EP, do you feel like really like submit to you and like in the game? Or like made people know like this is oh, this is who I am. Yeah, and this is what I came to do. This is what y'all gonna get from me every time. Like I think my um if you go on my Apple Music um Survivor series, that one right there, if you haven't heard it, I'll just give you a brief background on it. That was me saying like, yo, I'm here, this is where I'm from. I'm name dropping people that, that was around when I actually came up. So you know I was really in those environments. Everything about that is just solid. So go back and listen, listen to it. I'm really talk I got a song called Oodles and Noodles. I'm talking about I ate oodles and noodles for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like that's that's real life. If you really from the struggle or you've been through something, hard times, you know what that's like. You feel me? But my only thing. I don't want people to just look at me now and just mm -hmm. think it was always like this. Like, nah, bro, I used to sleep on a mattress on the floor too, bro. Like, for real. You get me? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Mm -hmm. What feeling do you think this new project will give us? Oh. Like, what's the what's the feel of the new project like? Yo, the feel of the new project, it's just, I feel like you really gonna get to know who I am. Okay. You, you feel like on? you a villain? To some people I am. <laughs> okay. To some people I'm a villain. You know, like after you deal with somebody. You're always the villain in somebody's mm -hmm. story. Yes, sir. Yes, but sir. if that's the case, if you've been with X amount of people before you got to me and it didn't work out, and me and you, we don't work out again, but you call me the villain, am mm. I really the bad guy? But look, I could be the villain for you, but I still need love too. Yeah. Villains need love too, February 12th. Go get that. It's on iTunes right now, Nine ninety nine. I know you got that. <laughs> you are definitely right. The what show. Do you, what is your process for creating like... Um, EPs, albums, anything like what's the, that process for you? My process is different every time. Okay. One thing about me, I hate putting a limit on myself. I love finding new ways to be creative because once you get into a pattern, I feel like you stunt your growth. Mm -hmm. But for me, the most I can say about that is I'll find a title first because okay. the title kind of shapes my brain to think a certain type of way and kind of create that type of way. Even when gotcha. it comes to songs, I'll put a beat on. Yo, listen. If you're watching this, I go on YouTube and find beats too. Don't be ashamed. It's all right. You feel me? Um, I go on YouTube. You got some good beats. Yeah, yeah, but everybody be like, they be shitting on YouTube beats. Mm -hmm. Everybody want to be like, I got my own producer. Like, all that's cool, but yo, it's some good producers on YouTube too, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, even like when I play the beat and I load it up, yo, I just start thinking. And whatever the most catchiest thing is that comes to me, I'll make that the title and then the words just flow from there. Gotcha. Okay. So, Soft Girl Era is. The song that's available right now from this new project mm -hmm. um do you think that i guess like in your past relationships or current relationships do you think that you promoted that to a woman because i feel like when you're speaking it i feel like it's like um giving your woman that space to be like yo you can be soft you can be vulnerable you don't have to have a guard up like yeah. i'm gonna give you what you need like you're gonna have a good time like i don't want you to think like I don't want you to think like you're in like your trauma stage still. Like yeah. I'm giving you that thing. So do you think that that's like that's what you always promoted to people that you have relationships with, past, future, like present, like? Listen, I would love to sit here and just lie and be like I was always <laughs> that guy. But yo, listen, soft girl, ever when y'all listen to that, you gotta understand those lyrics you hear me saying. No, I wasn't always like that. I had to learn over time, and. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's financial, whether it's emotional or spiritual connection that you got between somebody, mm -hmm. like you just got to be able to be there for that person. Just be resourceful in that way. You feel what I'm saying? Because gotcha. I've been the guy where I wasn't the most financially stable, but I made I made up for it in the other areas. You get what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. now in social media culture, all we hear is women yes. talk about, yo, right. you got to pay a bill. <laughs> you got to do this. Take me to the best restaurant in the city. But... Again, I've been there. If you're not really in that position, you can't really offer that. You get what I'm yeah. saying? But we both understand the power of money in America. Like, yeah. You get what I'm saying? So, so yeah. it is what it is, man. Kings, stay down. Wait to turn. If you're in the position, <laughs> take care of your woman, man. If you can't pay the whole rent, just kick something out. It's better than yeah. nothing. A little yeah. 200, 300. Awesome. You spend that on Xbox. You spend that on tennis shoes all the time. If this is the story that's really got your back, she holding you down. Yo, make her life just a little bit easier, and she won't be as gangster with you. She'll be soft. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, so you seem like a dude who would put together, like, the perfect date for your person. Like, you seem like you understand that. Like, yeah. oh, she want to do this, she want to do that. What do you think is, like, the perfect date for you? Like, if your girl was to take you out and be like, 
Bay, I know you like this. I know you like that. What do you think that perfect date would be for you? Listen, perfect date for me, as long as it's good food involved, we're going to laugh. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a little activity. Okay. I'm cool. Like, I'm not one of them using and abusing types. You better do this. You better do this. I need the best of the best. No, I'm cool. Regardless of how I might look on social media or whatever it appears to be, like, yo, I'm, a re I'm really chill. Like, I'm happy with whatever you do. Don't take me to Golden Corral now. <laughs> don't, get, don't do that. <laughs> you feel me? But, yo, I'm cool with whatever. I'll be passing your pot before a day. Okay. See, a lot of men wouldn't admit yeah. to that, but okay, okay. It is what it is, bro. I'm an open book. Okay, with this project, do you, what like, what hats did you wear? Like, were you just solely just like the artist and the writer, or were you like, all right, I need to pick this beat. The photo need to look like this. Like, when we do a video, it need to look like this. Like, what what hats did you take on as like an artist of this project? Well, the most important hat, I'm going to say, is this villain look, Villains Need Love 2 hat. That's on villainspov.com. You can get that for $27. Come on, man. <laughs> but in real life, all the hats, I just like to create by myself for real. Okay. So I kind of put everything together on my own. And then my, my cameraman, well, he's more than my cameraman. He's really like my brother. You get what I'm saying? But I'll send it to him because I know, like, if he says, nah, I know it's really not that. So gotcha. every time I make a song and I send it, I don't say nothing. I just anxiously wait for the response because I'm like, yo, is this good or if it's not? And he's like, yo, fire. I'm just like, all right, bet. So I wear all the hats for real, man. But, you know, I, I got certain people in place that's going to tell me yay and nay. Okay. How do you decompress? Elaborate on that. So you just created the project. Yeah. Which is like, for, for a musical artist, like, that's a whole thing. Like, I mean, even if you all, like, create fast or you take your time to create, like, mm -hmm. You're giving yourself to this project, mm -hmm. like the version of yourself that it is right now. Yeah. So how do you like, all right, I did I did two songs this day, which were either vulnerable or like they just were like where I'm at at that time. Like, how do you like come home and be like, all right, this my this is what I'm going to do to make sure I get my mind off of the song? Because you say you send it to your mans. If your mans going to like it or he don't. But, you know, you don't want to spend four hours waiting for him to respond back to be like, all right, cool. Like, I'm riled up just waiting for him to tell me what it is. But what do you do to make you, like, not make you, but, like, help you, like, calm down? Like, I did all the work that I had to do for today. I sent the song off. You was going to tell me if you like it or not. But, like, what do you do to, like, like calm, I, I guess, calm I from you. that storm pretty much? I wish I had a simple answer for you. If you're an artist and you're looking at this, if you feel just like me, just understand that I understand you. I can't calm down. After I make the song, okay. I will listen to it 400 times in a row. Okay. I'll try to listen to it as myself. I try to listen to it as a person who never even heard me before, but listening to it. Mm -hmm. I try to listen to it as somebody that actually knows me listening to it or the song who I'm making it about. Gotcha. Like, gotcha. I try to imagine their first time listening to it and their emotions. Like, it's hard for me to decompress. So I really run myself on the ground. It's really crazy. I don't think it's healthy, but yeah. Okay. I and mean, that's <laughs> no problem with that. No problem with that. Because I feel like as artists, like... We got to run ourselves a little crazy so yeah. we can know, like, what is perfection for our thing before we can give somebody else, like, that leeway to be like, all right, I made the song, here, take it, type thing, and be like, feel like that person is good enough with making the right decisions without you having to be, like, by their side or, like, talking with them constantly. So I, I would You not. know what's crazy about that, though, perfection? I used to be a perfectionist perfectionist, but now I got myself to the point where it's like, yo, people don't like perfection. Yeah, People which don't is like perfection. it's so is I feel like it's crazy within like the time that we in because like when you look on social media, it's so much like instant gratification. Like we want we want we want reels in like seven seconds or less. Yeah. Like we want like we want to see only like the good parts of everybody's story. Yeah. But if you like go to YouTube or if you, even if you see some type of reels that are like a minute long. Like, we see, like, the authenticity of a person or what we think is the authenticity and we hope to be the authenticity. And it's like we see they, pro they process, they progress, yeah. and, like, we love that. We connect with that so much more. Yeah. It's so it's so weird because, like, I, I think it goes back to, like, damn if you do, damn if you don't type thing. Because yeah. it's really, like, we want that instant thing, but it's really, like, we really just need to see, like, low-key, in the back of our minds, we were, we're all, like, yo, what's the process? How do you get here? What steps did you take? Type thing like in real life. What does this feel like to like get there? You know why? Because 
we look at stuff and we want to find something that we identify with. Mm-hmm. with it. But in Instagram culture, our brains and our minds have been so conditioned to trying to look like we're winning yeah. that we never show a bad day. And we look that makes us unreachable to the people who we are trying to draw in. So, yeah. But I'm like, a bad, like people, people need to see a bad day. They need to see like, that. I feel like when you go with any passion that you do, like you're gonna have like you can have a hundred bad motherfucking days in a row. Yeah. And you get to one oh one, it go up. Like oh. things can happen like that. So I think like it's so weird that that like the bulk of us are just like, I just wanna see like how this ends type thing. When it's really like, yo, if you don't see the the progress or the like the process of this. Like yeah. you will never truly understand how it ended this way. Exactly. All right. So I'm gonna get to my last question. Okay. How do you how do you celebrate? Like you're done creating a project, you're done creating songs for a day. How do you like go up? Like it's go a up. Saturday. I wanna have fun. Fuck it. I just so, did three songs. Like, what's up? Yeah. So far as my project, like I said, Villains Need Love Too. It drops on February 12, 2024 at 12 a.m. I will be in Miami. <laughs> okay. I will be in Miami. You, are you moving to Miami? Because I feel like you be there. Yeah. You moving to Miami? Uh, Just not, let me know. Not moving. Okay. Not moving, but, right. but that's, not, not this, not that's a hub time. for you. I would this say. A hub. Okay. Miami and Atlanta are both hubs for me. Okay. But I will be in Miami on jet skis, popping champagne, turning up, just putting everybody onto the music as I. As I possibly can, just just sharing the vibe because I'm gonna turn out, I'm gonna be excited, and I need you to see me being excited so you can be excited with me and we can just be excited together. You know what I mean? Got you, got you, got you. And it's Valentine's Day week, so I'm okay. I'm going to. That's my favorite holiday, by the way. Okay. Yeah. So why? Why? Men don't like that holiday, so why? I like the holiday. I don't know. I'm just like, I guess you could say like a romantic type of guy. I'm really into aesthetics. I like everything about it. You put on your best clothes. You go out. You know what I'm saying? So you. Would you say you would give a woman the perfect like holiday, like for Valentine's Day? I can't say perfect, but it's gonna be damn good. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> you feel me? So, yeah.